Hello, good afternoon. Afternoon. Good afternoon. And we are at Bigger Staff Boats again today. It is freezing, so we're going to try and hurry this along. Uh, Silver Fox is now finished, as you might have seen, and we've had some questions about the making of Narrowboat Silver Fox. So Kev and Rob are going to join us today, and they're going to answer some of your questions. First question then is from Andrew Riley from YouTube, and he wants to know how we work out the layout and weight of the ballast on the empty boat before we start fitting out, and if there's anything in the build process that changes the way that that ballast has to sit. So we're on a new empty boat, and I thought Rob would be the best person to answer this. <laughs> right, there's a couple of ways of answering it really. There's rules of thumb in the industry, but there is official display water displacement calculations you can do where obviously you take the length of your hull, the width of your hull and the size of your swim. You calculate them up, get the volumetric square meterage, well, how much water it's going to displace, then roughly you should know the weight of your engine, the weight of your fittings and fixtures and you can calculate it all up to have a rough, rough rule of what you should in. You generally look on between two and three tonne depending on what vessel you're having and what type of fit out you're having. You'd have to do it individually. There's really good guidance on a site called the Fit Out Pontoon. It's a really informative website. If you go on there, they actually work you through a 57 foot narrow boat calculations. So it'd be a good place to start if you're going to be a self builder. For us, we only do 57s and we have a pretty standardized layout. So we know roughly it's about two and a half ton which we will leave certain bays within the build, as you can see, certain ones will be left empty with the likes of the fires going or really heavy items, which we allow that for in our standard builds. So it's not just throwing tons of barbecue bricks in then? You can do, yeah, <laughs> just to the industry standard. Uh, no, you know, there is, diff there is different materials. People will use concrete paved and flags, so we use concrete commons. You want the most densile material you can use and obviously the boat most moisture resistance as it will be in the bilge of the boat and always try and bitumen or felt before you lay your ballast don't put it directly on the base plate brilliant i hope that answers your question andrew that's pretty detailed isn't it i wasn't expecting that much <laughs> cheers andrew Right, got Kev with me. So we have answered questions about the paintwork before, but we got some questions in about specifically why it's spray painted rather than hand painted. So Kev, let's answer this one again. Right, okay, uh, right. Well, the main reason is, ultimately is that you cannot hand paint a pearlescent color and iridium silver, which is a Mercedes stock color. Um, the only way to achieve the finish that we've, we've ultimately got uh, is to spray it. Um, a lot more involved than hand painted, uh, certainly facilities wise, you need the right equipment uh, and ultimately you need to be able to do it. That's it. If you go back to the paint job vlogs, it's actually two separate vlogs and the links are up there. If you watch those you'll just see how much work and time went into painting Narrowboat Silver Fox. Uh, and Kev's right, I mean you just got to look at the finish and I can't wait till launch day blue skies and the sun on it it's going to look absolutely amazing and you just can't get that pearlescent finish by hand painting wait until you see it and then make your own mind up. next question is from david bramley off twitter and he wants to know did any part of the build of narrowboat silver fox prove to be more difficult than we expected anything can be overcome with enough discussion and planning beforehand if you know if you, if you gauge it gauge it on board early enough and discuss all the not problems but requirements for the client and you can plan and adapt for it and engineer any of the solutions in if they are physically possible. How much like, because I know every now and then we'd kind of say oh is it possible we can do this and is it possible to do that? How much extra work was that for you? Honestly? Uh, it, it's not really because you know the reality of it is the, the, the design of the hull and the, the ultimate space you've got inside was never designed to do what we've, what, well, what most build, boat builders do with it, and whilst you know working to a relatively strong budget, you have to be realistic. And the simple answer is, you know, if it, if it won't work, we won't, we will not build it. We're back on board, Narrowboat Silver Fox. It's lovely and warm back here, isn't it? Toasty. It's totally <laughs> lovely. Next question came from Twitter from Barry Davis. He wants to know how we're gonna solve the problem of condensation. Good question, Barry. Well, we've just answered one of the key points there. It's nice and toasty. There's only one way to truly cure 
condensation and that is ventilation and heat you can't eradicate it you're in a tin can so we design and vent the boat as well as we can but it's still got to be a habitable space but it's got to be managed you've got to be aware of the condensation ventilate the spaces do, don't do the obvious don't have a boiling simmering kettle on your fire all day and wonder why you've got steam and condensation lines of washing down lines of washing is pants. another one of concern <laughs> but I say it's about educating the customer to their new boat you know if they've come from a house they're not from a boating background you've got to educate them to ventilate as much as they can you'll never eradicate it truly unless you get an equilibrium between the outside pressure and inside pressure so the key is keep your windows open when you can heat the space as much as you can and manage it as you, well as you can only use the correct heating system that a good radiant double radiator to kick the heat round you know I don't believe fin rads have got a place on boats you're not getting the flow you're not getting the airflow you've got to change the air pressure within the boat you want to be looking to every hour open your front and back doors and get a good blow through and these things will all help you can do other things you know there's a school of thought you can put kit, kit cat litter in tights put it in the cupboards I'm not using my tights for cat. No, hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy products on the market now, but I'd only buy a dry product that doesn't retain the water in it, like an Ambipure dehumidifier. It's only going to reintroduce that water unless you're constantly changing it. So if you look for a product with crystals and that actually takes it out, that can only help. So these, because I've seen these that you can like hang in your wardrobe that are like crystals, but the water collects in the bottom. Are they all right because it's kind of sealed in? Or would you want one that just kind of soaks it in? Soaks the it in and takes it out. Right. I say the, the one of the biggest keys that'll help you is a good stove. Yeah. You know, the stove helps with the air, regulating your airflow. It draws the moisture, cold water, dry air in yeah. and sends hot, dry air out. So keeping the stove going all day is going to draw that in and just Yeah, you know, you're only it. talking through the bad times of year where you're going to have your stove on anyway. I mean, yeah. it's like a contradiction. Open your windows and put your heating on, yeah. but it's the only way you can... I remember from our last boat, sat yeah. in November, a howling gale, and we've got the stove going, but we've got the bow doors wide open. Exactly that. It's about it's being educated to it and managing yeah. it as best as you can. Brilliant. Okay, I hope that answered your question, Barry, and, and everybody else, because I think a lot of people would love to be able to just get rid of condensation, wouldn't they? And yeah. it's common sense stuff, isn't it, really? It is. There's no way of eradicating it, it's just managing it. Yeah, brilliant. Cheers, Barry. Thanks, Barry. Right, we're sat at the diner. Ignore Kev and Sean, just sat at the back lounging about there. Uh, next question comes from Ken Mayfield. He messaged us on Facebook and he wants to know about the MDF panels that we've got on Narrowboat Silver Fox. It did raise some questions, a few eyebrows, when we first showed it in the vlog a few vlogs ago. Uh, so Ken wants to know, are they really all right and ideal to use on a narrowboat? Let's hope so, eh? Let's <laughs> <laughs> find out. Yeah, good, good question, Ken. Thanks, thanks for the question. Right, medium density fiberboard is quite a stable product. You're talking about moisture. The problem is moisture, not the product. If we talk about the veneer, the panels, the wallboards, they're a moisture resistant panel. So they've been designed to allow a certain tolerable percentage of moisture. The backs of the products has actually been sealed with a PVA solution before the top of the products has had a two coat system to seal them that way. There's also behind them, you've got the thermal performance of the foam, plus then a 20 mil air gap, which I know was a question raised on a previous vlog about why you did. That's why the foam doesn't come right to the depth of the batten and why we use a 45 mil batten rather than a 20 mil and then fill it completely. So you've got an air gap, so yeah, there isn't a problem with using the product. And even if we did put a solid oak tongue and groove, say on the walls, if that gets moisture in it, that'll go black the same as a MDF panel will. The problem is moisture. Doesn't matter whether you use a solid material or a panelled or man-made material, you've got to eradicate the source of moisture from becoming because the moisture is the problem, not the product you're using. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else want to complain about MDF panel boards? I'm going to give you this guy's telephone number. Just don't use it externally or you will have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Thanks for your question, Ken. Next question is from Linda Redwood of Facebook. Hello Linda, hiya. Hi. How do you choose the tradesmen and suppliers for things like windows and covers? Not really a difficult question to answer. Um, whilst we, 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 we source 
the absolute best products that we can. Uh, every one of our suppliers, whether they be the timber, the suppliers, uh, the people who build the windows, Colwells, uh, Amtrim, Dave, uh, we, we've, we've sort of gone away and outside the box to what other boat builders do. The simple answer is... Uh, they put as much dread. passion into their products as we put into ours, which they, well, is why... They, they think we're mad, really, don't they? Yeah. They think we're a bit mad because we don't really do the norm. So when it comes to the covers... Uh, we, we sat down with the lads from Antrim and uh, we, we came up with this bizarre design shape etc which we were all a little bit unsure about to be honest uh, but no the results are fantastic absolutely fantastic and hats off to all the suppliers they do a cracking job uh, and they have become part of our, our team really haven't they extended part of our team Yeah. thank you Linda thank, thanks Linda uh, right, that is it. Uh, we've asked all the questions that we're going to ask. There's one more, and to make sure we get an honest response, me and Sean are going to disappear. We're going to scarper and leave Kev and Rob to answer it on their own. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, come on, then we're going then. Some so, disappearing making a huge difference. It's not like they're can, ever going to hear can it. We have, can, can you leave us with the question so yeah. we can yeah. we can read the question out? Prepare for this to be heavily edited. <laughs> so uh, it's question number eight, and we're we're. Oh, it's tremendous! Uh, Gregor Thomas. Uh, He's one of the patrons. Patreon, good lad. We need more of them, so we can put the price of the boat up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Thanks, Greg, and for your for your question. Honestly, what has working with the foxes been like? Beep 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's we've we've actually become really close, um, and absolutely one hundred percent we we are friends. I mean, you see us in, interacted on Twitter. We won't say what goes on on WhatsApp. Yeah, ours, is not, for just, the, ours is not for the public forum. Just off the scale, that one. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a WhatsApp group with the, with the team here. We are uh, sell and join them fees to that WhatsApp group. If yeah, yeah, knows. yeah. And uh, if ever if ever somebody wanted to make a movie, <laughs> oh my God, have I got the script. Um, so the, the, the simple answer is, it's, well, certainly from my, my point of view, and I know, I know, I know you're the yeah. same, we have had the best time. We really, really have. From the very first time I met the guys, uh, I genuinely believed in what they were doing and what they were wanting to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, fantastic. It's as simple as that. It's like yeah, it's like everyone. You know, I think they said it on an early vlog when people said, "How do you pick where to buy a boat from?" You've got to have a gel between oh, yeah, the customer. Sure. And the boat builder. Yeah, for sure. They, you know, they loved our product. We liked them. And to have the foxies along for the journey from the very, very start. I mean, you know, we watch the vlogs. We've purposely tried to stay in the background of the vlogs because it's not about us. Um, it's about Colin and Sean. Yeah, it's about their journey. And um, yeah, you know, we all get shivers up our spine when we watch the vlogs of ultimately what we've built. The simple answer, and you can ask anyone here. And they'll tell you the same. They've been absolutely brilliant. Yeah. An absolute pain in the ass. Yeah, it's had its challenges, but, but they've all been rewarding challenges. But we've we've we we we've we, we all know where we're coming from. Uh yeah, and it's 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 been a, a an absolute honesty pleasure. from the outset, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. You Without know, a shadow of a doubt. So there you go. Uh questions and answers from Rob and Kev. I hope that uh, gave you some more information. Not long till launch day now. Ooh, so close, <laughs> so close. A couple of weeks away. Uh, if you want to stay up to date and want to be notified about all the videos and vlogs and information, then just tick the notifications icon and subscribe. And YouTube will do the rest. And yes. it's all free. It's all free. It's all free. Sean loves that word. Uh, please click like if you like the video and click like if you didn't like the video. <laughs> there you go, that's what works best. If you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below and we will answer them for you. And we will see you next time. See you later, bye-bye. Right. Moving. <laughs> yoo -hoo. So cold. It's freezing. I'm trying to baggy me top out. Get, show your ankles. Hello. Recognise us off Crime Watch. <laughs> Uh, Kev, you look dead miserable. I am. <laughs> I look at you, well, sorry. <laughs> it's on our hat off. Right, it's up to you. Because we're running from... Look like, like a robber. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> right, no, let me just get me, just get me wig right. That way.
<laughs> it's mad when you look at yourself on a camera, isn't it? Yeah. Um, can we start again? Because I've, I've lost my thread. Yeah. Are you educating me about painting now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I should turn the camera around to the crew. My nose doesn't want to go on camera, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> my belly doesn't. Want to... <laughs> so that was a long winded no, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Bazinga boom. Yeah. Sean, yeah. just shush for a sec. We've been stood here for about 15 minutes trying to get Sean to ask this next question. So he's going to ask it from a piece of paper because he can't remember one line of text <laughs> and a name. So if you think this he's, is Kev, if you think he's looking, head, if you, this is true. If you think he's looking down Kev's back, he's not. He's actually looking at the question, <laughs> which is written on Kev's back. Over to you, Sean, again. Yeah. <laughs> when you're ready, like you know. Or should I'm we just, do I'm all of that again? Here. I'm just stood here listening. Yeah. 